Welcome to a special series of Enochian Censored Folks, where we feature the stories behind Enochi's 20th anniversary festivities and their partners. Today, we are featuring the Dala Group of Companies. The company was founded by the late Dr. Neil Dala, who was a visionary, innovator, doctor, entrepreneur, and philanthropist. One of his many missions was to serve humanity by filling the gaps in society, making products and services accessible to the masses. The company's extensive portfolio includes properties in healthcare, real estate, and hospitality. Joining me today is his esteemed sister, Dr. Ruby Dollar, who is the CEO of the Dollar Group of Companies. Ruby, by the way, guys, you need to know about this, rose to worldwide fame in 2004 when she became the first woman of Indian origin in the Western world to be elected as a member of parliament right here in Canada. And of course, guys, this brother and sister team are indeed a dynamic duo with their respective service to the global community. Now, without further ado, let me introduce you to the fabulous Dr. Ruby Dala. My dear lady, I have known you for two decades, and this is the first time I've had the pleasure of being able to sit down and chat about your incredible journey. Thank you so much, uh, Raj. And uh, I know that we've known each other for a very, very long time. Uh, it's an absolute honor and a pleasure. And uh, even for myself, uh, I think that good things always come to those who wait. So I'm glad I waited to have this opportunity uh, to sit down with you and to share uh, a little bit about the journey. And uh, before we start, I want to congratulate you uh, on your vision, uh, on your passion that you've had of promoting South Asians, of promoting South Asian excellence, and as a strong believer and supporter of women. I am so incredibly proud of you uh, as a friend, as a woman, as someone from the community, but also I think as a Canadian, as an entrepreneur, what you have created really speaks volume. And I think what speaks most volume is about the fact that as a single mother, uh, what you have done for your son, I think is just tremendous. It's incredible. And I wish you lots of love and blessings and may Babaji continue, um, you know, your success story and you're celebrating 20 years and may you have another 20 uh, in 20 more to come. Oh my gosh. You know, I love you so much. You are truly the woman that I want to be when I grow up. I've told you this before, and I will always say this to you. You, your journey has been so exceptional. And it's one that I'm so excited to share with everyone, not just here, but also at one of our events. So let's let let's kind of group back to the beginning of the journey of the Dala Group of Companies, which Dr. Neil Dala, of course, is the founder of. Can we talk a little bit about his mission, his um, journey uh, to wanting to do this and why this was important for him to do? I don't want to get emotional starting, but uh, he's, um, you know, I've worn many hats over my political, uh, over my career, you know, as uh, in politics, uh, in being an entrepreneur and in being a, a, a chiropractor, being in healthcare, but the, uh, the hat that I've been proudest to wear has been uh, to be the sister of uh, Dr. Neil Dalla. And uh, he was uh, an incredible, incredible human being. He was uh, an incredible son, mm -hmm. you know, for him, his mom was his queen and his uh, sister, he always treated like a princess. And, you know, we were very young when we lost our father. So he was also the man of the house. Yes. And just an incredible human being, not only, you know, to his family, to his uh, mama G's and mommy G's, to his uh, cousin brothers, to his nieces, to his nephews, to his cousin sisters, but also, you know, to his friends and those that he worked with, you know, mm -hmm. in the Dalla group. And for many of uh, the women that worked with him, you know, he was so supportive of their careers. And they started off, you know, some of them just in university volunteering. And as time went on, you know, they went on to get married, uh, they went on to become mothers. And they stayed with him throughout, you know, their entire journey. And even though he is with us no more, those women are still with us in our team. And I mm -hmm. think that fills me with a great sense of pride because Neil was raised with two women, but he brought those teachings, you know, that we had in our home, you know, to the workplace. And he just really supported, you know, women and he empowered them 
and he promoted them and he grew them, you know, with a great deal of respect and a great deal of care because he wanted to see those women, you know, succeed. And I think, you know, when I look at our organization of the Dalla Group of Companies and I see the number of women that we have involved in leadership roles, I think it's a great testament to the vision um, and to the uh, really to the passion that my brother had for having women a part of the team. Mm-hmm, absolutely. You know, he, he, he was such a big picture thinker, you know, and there's so much that he has amassed in the work that he did behind the scenes. You know, he wasn't one to speak of the successes. The successes showed, you know, in the public. So I wanted to maybe, you know, ask you a question, which I feel is very fundamental for people to know about leadership um, role models like Dr. Neil Dala. And, and that is, what was his overarching mission with the company? Because he has so many tranches and departments within it. Let's, let's, you know, share that a little bit with everybody. You know, well, firstly, uh, Neil had two life philosophies. Uh, The first life philosophy that he had came from the Sikh faith, uh, which is our faith. And that philosophy, you know, comes from uh, our Gurbani or the teachings of our gurus, which Mm -hmm. says, man niva de mat uchi, which means in English to live life in humility without ego and for anyone and everyone that knew neil they knew that he was really a man who was very very humble Mm -hmm. uh he was one to show sometimes people have a dollar and they show that they have so much and neil was blessed with so much through his hard work you know and success that he had but he never showed and he really loved and cared for people you know for who they were And when you come into our organization and you come to our office, you know, even our cleaner who's been with us for 17 years, you know, he just gave her so much love and so much respect. And you could talk to our person who does all the repairs for the building. And he had such fondness and respect for him. And I think that's why when he departed, people didn't remember, you know, all of what he had built or the amount of money that he had. They remembered Neil Dalla for the type of man that he was and the respect that he showed everyone, the love and the kindness and the care and the compassion. And that is why I think, you know, that we all must remember, as you said, Mm -hmm. that, you know, your legacy is really about your actions. And he, his actions, I think, have touched so many lives. Neil's other philosophy in life, which can perhaps be contributed, I think, to so much of, you know, what he achieved was, you know, from the book called The Secret. And The Secret has, you know, three, can be summed up sort of in in three words. And it says, if you ask for it, believe in it and receive it. And I know this is probably going to sound a little bit, uh, you know, funny to some, but on Friday nights, instead of, you know, going out with our respective friends or for guys, you know, for my brother going out partying, uh, him and I would actually stay home and we would actually create, you know, these vision boards and deal, you know, when he was younger, uh, we lived uh, in this great city called Winnipeg, and one of Neil's first jobs was as a bellboy at the Delta Hotel in Winnipeg. And he started off as a bellboy, and I remember he came home, and we lived in one of the poorest, you know, neighborhoods, uh, not only in Winnipeg, but I think the country, but it was such a great neighborhood called the North End. And he came home and he told my mom, I think he was like 17 or 18 years old at that point, and he told my mom, he said, you know what, one day, mom, I'm going to own that hotel And I think my mom probably smiled at him, you know, and thought, how is this going to be possible? You know, but as time went on and he would create his vision board, vision boards, you know, he would actually have pictures of everything that the Dalla Group perhaps has created and built today. Wow. You know, that book, that philosophy of uh, the Sikh faith of Man Niva, uh, you know, Mat Uchi and the book, The Secret, to ask for it, believe it and receive it, I think was really a defining ethos of what Neil achieved. And it was also achieved, you know, I think through the teachings of my mother, you know, who as a single mother taught us the three fundamentals that faith always comes first and everything we have achieved and everything Neil created and Neil built, you know, it was through the blessings of God. 
And the second was family, to always ensure that you put your family first and you care for your family. And that is why Neil did so much, not only for his immediate family, but his extended family and those, you know, that he worked with and his friends, because he had so much, you know, love to give to all of them. And he was always there in time of need. You know, they say when there's a party, everyone comes and joins you, but your true friends are those who are there for you, you know, in your time of need. And, you know, the one story that I uh, wanted to share with you on this, because I think your viewers will uh, probably find it very interesting, but I think was really a reflection of the type of person, you know, that Neil was, you know, from a business perspective, perspective uh he was a type of person who had a vision that when there was rubble he actually saw skyscrapers but the type of individual that he was personally you know after he passed uh, a friend of ours came uh, his friend actually came over to our house and you know was sharing the story which really really just touched my heart you know she was telling us of how as a social worker you know she had finished seeing a client and the client was a single mother and when she had gone to you know this uh single mother's home she had found a bed that was infested with uh, bed bugs and she had a young baby and she said you know this woman requested a bed and she said when you go through the government program and she would as a social worker have to do all of the required applications it can take anywhere from two to three weeks and she said that she had never ever seen a case where you know what was so uh, where the woman was so desperate to have this bed and you know as a social worker she would see so many cases but she was very very touched you know and heartbroken after uh, seeing this woman and visiting her and she said the next day you know so she told this woman that i will get you and put the order in but it's going to take two to three weeks and she said the next day she got a phone call from the same woman crying on the phone thanking her you know that she had actually gotten this bed and the social worker was thinking to herself she's like it's not possible because i haven't even you know signed off on all of the paperwork and the requisition. And then she remembered that the only person that she had told the story to was Neil. And Neil had asked, you know, for this address and not even known to myself or anyone else. And he didn't even tell the social worker, but he actually bought the best mattress and bought the bed and had it delivered to the woman's house the following day so that this single mother and her baby would have a proper place to sleep. And that's the type of person he was, always helping, but always doing it in quiet and never mm -hmm. wanting or needing anyone to know about it. Mm -hmm. Because it's not about the fame for him. And, and you know that I knew him. And every single time that I would meet him, he would always say to me, Ruby, I really admire what you're doing, Raj, because you're doing something that is not for you. And this is something that he would say to me every single time for years. It's like he really supported and understood how hard it was to do something that isn't something that everybody does. And I, and I feel that that is something he did a lot with his company as well. I mean, when you look at his clinics and some of the technology also, that was a part of what he wanted to bring into some of these neighborhoods in Canada that weren't getting support. Can you share a little bit about that as well? His philosophy behind, you know, the clinics and that part of the business before we move into the other tranches as well. Yeah. And, you know, before I, you know, just talk about the Dalla group and what Neil built, you know, I, I shared this with you in, in person and uh, because we've known you for, for so many years and we've seen the rise of Anoki and how Anoki has evolved, you know, through all of the various, uh, you know, stages of where it started off and how it's evolved, you know, into technology um, and utilizing an engagement with its viewers, not only here in Canada, but America and all over the world, you know, so much of your journey. Um, Raj, uh, what you have created and built and what you stand for and what you have achieved, these are the very values, you know, that were at the very core of what Neil believed in. And so much of your success, 
you know, symbolizes, you know, what his, um, his vision was, and his belief was, and the type of people that he wanted to support and empower, you know, they were people like yourself, who as a young woman, as a single mother, has single handedly created Anoki into an international brand, but not promoting itself as a Noki, but really promoting the community and promoting excellence and promoting achievers and promoting success, because that in return is an opportunity, you know, to inspire, to empower and to motivate the next generation of leaders. Um, so your journey and Anoki's journey is really, I think, symbolic of uh, what Neil championed in his life and what mm -hmm. he believed in. So congratulations on that. Thank you, sweetheart. And Please going, to your, yes. going to know your question about the yes. Dallas. So we have three umbrellas, as I uh, described them. Uh, they are healthcare, real estate, and hospitality. In the healthcare sector, uh, that is something that the Dalla Group has always believed in uh, because of the fact that Neil and I both as uh, chiropractors, we believe in health and we believe in wellness. So 20 years back, we started off uh, in Ontario, uh, one of the first multidisciplinary healthcare clinics. These multidisciplinary healthcare clinics are basically one-stop shops for all types of patients where we have uh, medical doctors, chiropractors, physiotherapists, massage therapists, kinesiologists, all the there to help patients get back into their pre-injury status. Some mm -hmm. of those patients are there because they've been injured in motor vehicle accidents. Other patients are there because of an injury that they've sustained, either shoveling the snow or picking something up, or some of them are post-operative cases. We also have another vertical which provides in-home and at hospital care for patients who aren't able to come into the clinical setting. We have another vertical uh, which provides mental health services. So we have a number of psychiatrists and social workers, uh, you know, that um, and psychotherapists that we work with that help, you know, patients with the support that they need. We also have a medical supplies division. Uh, we are very proud uh, that uh, our company, the Dalla Group, was one of the only Canadian companies uh, that was selected to provide uh, medical supplies to the Department of Defense in the United States of America. Yeah. Department of Veteran Affairs and a variety of other uh, countries globally, including the NHS in the UK. Um, so we have really focused a lot on health and wellness. In addition, we have pharmacies and telemedicine. And I think you mentioned earlier on, uh, one of the verticals that Neil and I were most proud of uh, was our support and healthcare services that we provided uh, to the First Nations that live in remote and northern communities. And providing services on remote and northern communities, you know, helps to ensure that the First Nations across this country get access to the healthcare services that they need. And just, you know, uh, months before Neil passed away, him and I were working on, I think, one of our uh, life passionate projects that we called it. And uh, not that we needed more work or because we were <laughs> Four or five hours a day, uh, but the issue of uh, mental health and addictions, which we saw was so prevalent and increasing, not only in the South Asian community, but all across the country, you know, our uh, sort of life passionate project was going to be on the opening of addiction centers uh, across Canada. And, you know, Neil was the type of person where we would discuss something one minute and I would step away for a few minutes after that discussion and I would come back into the room and there Neil would be, you know, on his computer, on his laptop laptop, you know, registering domain names. And I remember when we discussed the addiction <laughs> center, you know, he had the whole thing mapped out and Neil never just wanted, you know, one clinic or one addiction center. Neil in 10 minutes had built an entire, you know, brand of what the scalability would be of which provinces and how it would be in the U.S. And we were going to take this global. But most importantly, I think at his core, you know, he just wanted to help. And uh, I look at the domain yes. name he registered, you know, for the addictions and mental health. And I could just tell by the domain names that he registered that he just really wanted to, you know, provide support and help not only those individuals that were suffering, but also their families. Mm -hmm. So that's our healthcare umbrella. On the real estate side, there's commercial and residential. And the hospitality umbrella, which I shared a story with you of how we started off as the bellboy and said, one day I'm going to own that hotel. Well, that's exactly what Neil Dalla did. He ended up, uh, you know, buying, uh, getting into the hospitality of the hotel industry and uh, built 
you know, and bought uh, and sold a number of different brands and hotels, uh, both here in Canada and in Florida. And uh, the day that he actually passed, uh, we spoke at uh, nine o'clock that evening. He was uh, in uh, in Miami. And uh, I think for me, more so than, uh, than Neil, I always had a passion, you know, to want to buy a hotel in Miami. And I remember that last conversation with him. Uh, he called me up and he said, your brother, the little guy from Winnipeg, he did it. We finally bought in Miami. And for the first time, he said to me, he said, sister, this hotel is for you. Oh, so who, my gosh. You know, hours later that uh, he would be with God, but uh, he had a great passion for, for everything that he did. And most importantly, he was just such an incredible, incredible son and incredible brother and an amazing, amazing friend. And I, everyone that works, uh, you know, at our office today and everyone that's worked with him really, really looked up to him as a mentor because he believed in mentoring and empowering people. And the mm -hmm. reason for the success of the Dalla Group is not only, you know, for the vision that Neil Dalla had, but also the incredible team that we had who are just as passionate about our success and our growth and our future as we are. Mm -hmm, absolutely. You know, there are so many different things that make companies stand out in their marketplace. And what I'm hearing as a common denominator with the story that you're sharing, uh, Ruby, is just this whole corporate culture that is a part of the ecosystem that he that he envisaged and then he actioned and, and made a reality. Can you tell me in your words, because this is what I see, what you, what you feel makes the company stand out in the marketplace. Share that a little bit because he was very specific about the industries he wanted to go into, right? And he really listened to yourself and his mother. Like family was really a core component for him as well. He really did step into that role as head of the household and, and, and he built and he has left behind a legacy that is greater than anything that anyone at his age in any of our circle could ever have done. And he did it with nothing. This is a remarkable story. And it's a story that I'm really happy that you're coming on to share. What is that core company component that makes you stand out in the marketplace? I think it comes from having, you know, a, a vision and being passionate about what you do. Neil was a type of person and so was everyone in our family. He never chased money. It was never about the dollar. And, you know, even when this Miami hotel deal, you know, came about, my mom actually said to Neil to not do it. She said, listen, you know, there's only 24 hours in a day and God's blessed you with enough, you know, not only for this lifetime, but you know, many lifetimes to come and you should just really, really take a break. She actually wanted him to get married, but that's what she told him. But, you know, <laughs> of I, I'll course. Never forget, we were sitting, you know, the Indian mom, she's like, get married. But we were, <laughs> we were sitting in our living room and I remember Neil looked at her and I, and he said, mom, this is not about the money. He said, I love what I do. And for me, my work is not work. It's just a, a love and a passion that I have. So I think what sets the company apart are, are two things of having that vision and that passion, but having that fire, because, you know, every day, you know, when you are here at the office, it never seems like work. But, you know, when you're running multiple businesses, there are a number of challenges that occur on a daily basis. And mm -hmm. He was a type of individual. He just never, ever got phased. And it was never about what is the problem. It was always about what is the solution. And right. everyone on the team, he said to them, he said, when you come and meet me, talk to me about the solution. Don't talk to me about the problem. And I think the other thing that really distinguishes, you know, the Dalla group apart and was also a contribution to his success is the fact that he really, you know, had had built an incredible team around him. And we are mm. so blessed. You know, some of our uh, people on our team have been with us for 20 years. And that was a day that we started. And I think, you know, that longevity, you know, of people working with you for 20 years, and that's just not one person, but a number of people, you know, on the team, I think just speaks volume about the type of company culture that you have. 
you know, because I always tell everyone that we're not a clock punching organization. You know, everyone here is very passionate about the growth and the future, you mm -hmm. know, about innovation and doing things differently and making life easier, you know, for all people, whether it's patients coming into the clinic or whether it's customers going into, you know, the, uh, the hotels. So I think it's really about having a team who believes in what your vision is, but having really a team, you know, that is respected and treated like a family, because right. here in our office, everyone is an extended family. Right. And that's so clear. Even people who come as guests or your clients or people that, you know, are, you know, business associates are the extended family. I've experienced that myself. <laughs> you know, it's incredible. Well, yeah. We always laugh. Anyone that comes to our house, uh, they, no matter, even if they're full or how much they've eaten, they never leave our house unless my mom has made home cooked food for them. <laughs> and so when they walk out, they're completely stuffed in the <laughs> office. They always want her butter chicken, which she's very famous for. But if they come to their office, we don't have the butter chicken, but we definitely, uh, you know, uh, want to ensure that everyone has a very positive experience when they come in, whether it's to the home or to uh, to the office, because, uh, you know, and this is symbolic that I'm saying this ironic, actually, that I'm saying this since uh, in light of what's happened with uh, with my brother. But, you know, we never, ever know what's going to happen from one minute to the next. And mm -hmm. life is so incredibly short. All we are left with, you know, at the end you know, when our uh, circle of life or our journey finishes, you know, we go on to another journey. Um, all we are left with really are our memories and people, every single person always remembers the last moment that you met them. And right. I, I heard such beautiful stories, you know, and touching and heartfelt stories, you know, about experiences that people shared with Neil. And they always talked about the last time they spoke to him or saw him. So I always, you know, share with everyone that whatever we can do to really touch the lives of people and hopefully change their lives for the better and empower them, whether it's giving them more confidence or giving them support or just making them smile. To me, that is uh, the biggest gift that one can give. Absolutely. Um, it's the gift that just keeps giving, right? Cliche as it is, but it's the truth. And and that's the thing that I, I feel is um, so fundamental in the corporate culture that you've built is just family first and everyone's family, you know? Let me ask you this. I want to ask you this, especially since this is a company that didn't come from generational wealth. You, you, you know, you touched on the fact that you lived in the most, you know, poverty stricken part of the country. And when Dr. Neil Dala passed on, he left generational wealth. That's a big thing in a very short span of time. I need to ask you this because I feel all those people out there who, you know, are struggling with challenges, who feel that they can't get past them. And you also shared that um, he also didn't really focus on those things. He focused on where are we going? Where is, where is, where is it that we are going to end up going? once we have passed this challenge, right? So I wanna ask you this, what has been the biggest challenge that the Dala Group of Companies has had to overcome? Um, and I know that there's many, and I know that they're daily, I know that they're hourly, but if you were to kind of look at the trajectory, anything that perhaps um, Dr. Neil Dala may have shared, maybe something that you have seen happen, I'd love for you to share that for all those people out there who think that, when they look at people like yourself, that they think that you really have everything and that there aren't any challenges because people don't know the true stories of how things are built and how they're sustained and how they then grow. You know, people always see so much, but uh, the one thing that very few people actually know about is the journey and the hard work and the struggle and the sacrifices. And, you know, whether it was, you know, Friday nights or whether it was Saturdays or Sundays or whether it was even, you know, Christmas Day or Christmas Eve, you know, both him and I and even my mom, you know, we were just working away and we would be at the office until sometimes at midnight or we would be here at 7 a.m. And it was literally seven days a week. And even after being blessed with so much and having built so much, you know, that that 
ethic, that ethos of hard work, you know, still continues because you really value and you respect and you appreciate every single dollar, you know, because you have struggled to, to build that. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, when it comes to a point, you know, which Neil was a big believer in, and that teaching has come from my mom, it was really just always about giving back and supporting, you know, those who need it most and, you know, supporting those um, individuals, those organizations where your generosity was going to be felt, you know, not for the sake of actually giving something, but your generosity was going to be felt and actually making a difference of whether it was you know, feeding a, a, a child or helping someone at an orphanage or helping, you know, a, a, a young woman who is a victim of domestic violence or someone who's suffering from mental health or seniors, you know, who don't have food to eat. When your generosity, when you have that opportunity, I think just giving back and having a big heart. And, you know, they always say the more you give, the more, uh, you know, well, God will give you. So going back to, you know, your question of what is the biggest um challenge that the Dalla group of companies has had uh, I can say I think it's been his passing because I've yes. always had you know a, a passion for for public service and I've dedicated you know literally my entire youthhood and most of my life you know to to public service mm -hmm. and running in, you know, multiple elections and volunteering before I ran politically and then still working politically and being politically active, you know, post my elections, most of my time and energy were spent on, on public service and helping and empowering and mentoring, you know, others. And when my brother passed, you know, so suddenly with, you, you know, without, um, without even knowing it in hours, you know, he was gone at that point, you know, there wasn't even the sort of opportunity to even necessarily grieve because there was just so much, you know, that had to be taken care of. And it started, mm -hmm. you know, literally minutes after we found out, you know, that, or I found out first that he had passed and, you know, from everything from the funeral arrangements and then having it in multiple cities and, you know, two days after, you know, finding out, you know, with the people telling me, oh, you actually have an opening for a hotel. And I said, for the Miami hotel. And I said, opening, I said, well, what needs to be done? Did he even cut a check? And as he signed the paperwork and, you know, 4 p.m. that day, he had given the check, you know, for this opening. And so, and I knew nothing about the hotel space. So, mm -hmm. You know, but I had to literally 10 days, you're in the middle of grieving of having lost not only a brother, but your best friend and the man of the house and someone that our entire family just really, really looked up to because he was a mentor for so many. And all of a sudden you're having to, you know, put on this brave face and you're having to open up this new hotel in Miami and you don't really know anything about it. So right. it was. I think the biggest challenge for the organization, you know, was was his loss. And the one thing that I've learned is when you go through a tragedy like this, and I don't think there can be any worse tragedy, you know, than uh, than losing someone that you love so suddenly. Uh, I think the the lesson out of this is that you can make the best of it, or you can make the worst of it. And I decided. You know, despite uh, the pain, you know, that uh, we continue to feel to this day, but, you know, despite the pain and the loss and the heartache, I just really focused on making the best of it so that we could champion his legacy because me making the best of it with our team, you know, and my mom, you know, who's lost a, a son and Neil was a center of her world because mm -hmm. I was in politics and always traveling. And, you know, uh, she and uh, both my mom and my brother, you know, put their heart and soul into building the business. And, you know, even she comes to the office every day and she sits with the accountants and she sits with a team and, you know, she has everything coordinated. So even for her, you know, we said that this is a circle of life and you know it was God's wish and God's will and at the end of the day we may not agree with it which we don't but uh, we have to at the end believe uh, in God and continue our faith and when I see my mom you know pray daily for two hours a day um, I think wow I said her you know my strength comes from her and we've decided you know really to move forward with championing everything that uh, Neil built and mm -hmm. worked hard for for so many years.
Absolutely. And you know, your, your mom is a remarkable human being. I'm not even, I'm not going to say a remarkable woman because she's a remarkable human being. I, I don't think anyone in any gender or identity um, would disagree with that. Uh, how she's, you know, forged forward and how she has watched this legacy you know, become what it has, larger than life. And that's what legacy is, right, Ruby? It's larger than anything and anyone. And and and, and this is, you know, the feeling is, is that the founding member never leaves, you know, like the the, the sense of the energy and the and and their belief system and their value system and their mission lives on. And this is what legacy is, right? And that's what's beautiful about about this whole story that you're sharing and I, and and I feel that it's partly the success story but I, I I'd love for you to share what is the company's biggest success that you deem to be success based on your definition of what success is that's a good question you know I just want to share before I just talk about your uh give an answer to your question you know there's probably a lot of people watching you know, your, uh, your show, because you have an audience globally, um, you know, that have gone through grief and have lost, you know, a loved one. And there's many people that I know that have gone through, uh, you know, that suffer are suffering from grief, because they've lost a loved one. Mm -hmm. And some of those individuals, you know, are really suffering from very severe, you know, depression because of that loss. And, when you go through a loss like this, it's very unique and it's very different for everyone. No two losses are alike and mm -hmm. two stories of grief are also never, ever the same. But I do want to say to everyone that is watching that find it within yourself to get up, to get out of bed and keep yourself busy and follow whatever your passion is that makes you happy because life is really, really incredibly short. And we all say it. I used to say it all the time for many years, even before my brother passed. And I always believed in living every minute to the fullest and making the most out of every day. But when it practically actually hits you and happens to you and you do suffer a loss, you know, whether it's of a brother or a father or a mother or a sister or a daughter, please just get up out of bed, still turn to God you know, whether it's going to your church or the Gudwar or the Mandir or the Masjid or your church, wherever your prayer, you know, services, or even at home, you know, turn to God because it's a circle of life. And whether mm -hmm. it's someone like the queen, you know, who served the whole world, you know, God didn't even save her, you know, and at the end, it is really the circle of circle of life. And you have to find it within your heart there are always tears. And I think that crying is also, you know, very healthy and it's, you know, it's, uh, it's healing. Mm -hmm. And even though the person goes and you can't physically see them, I think you touched on this, they're actually mm -hmm. always there. And I feel my brother's presence, you know, his signs and symbols are a plane. And after you're not going to believe this while I'm talking about this, I'm hearing a plane. Of course. <laughs> which is really crazy, but you know, there's his signs are a plane and the number three, 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 because that was the last time that he actually checked, you know, his phone and you're not going to believe this Raj, but we actually see his, his signs everywhere, you know, whether it would be a plane or the number three, three, three constantly. So we know, you know, when our hearts are really filled um, with knowing the fact that even though we cannot see him, he is actually with us. And mm -hmm. that applies to so many of your viewers and your listeners who may have suffered grief and loss. And you have to find it within yourself, you know, however that is to really develop that strength. And all of that strength may not come overnight, but try to develop that strength in you piece by piece and go out and live and enjoy. And whether it is throwing yourself into work or, you know, getting the counseling that you need, you know, don't be, uh, you know, ashamed to do that. For those that have suffered grief, there's spirit mediums, which really help. Mm 
yeah. you know, in helping you, bringing you closer to your loved one. But don't be afraid to talk about it. You know, sometimes in our culture, they say that, you know, or don't talk about the person that's passed. But I actually think completely differently. My mom and I and our entire family and our friends, we actually celebrate Neil everywhere. We have a beautiful picture of him, you know, at home. We have actually a whole wall that's dedicated, you know, to, to Neil here at the office when you came. You saw yeah. that as we celebrate him and we talk to him and, you know, so even though he can't see us, we know that he is, you know, with us, he's around us and he's still protecting, you know, my mom and I. So to all mm. of those that have suffered a loss, um, you know, please try to wake up in the morning, you know, turn to God, but also within yourselves, try to build up some strength and confidence and smile because that is what the loved one, the person that has, you know, gone that we cannot see would want, you know, for you, mm -hmm. you know, so going back to your question, which was about what is the biggest success of uh, the Dalla group, and I think it maybe relates to a little bit about what I was talking about, I hope that through the work of my brother and the sacrifices that we have made you know, along the way and the struggles and some of the challenges, you know, that we faced, um, whether it was my brother, you know, who was entering as an example, the healthcare and the hotel industry, um, the hotel industry in particular, without very little experience, only a vision and a dream that he had, because he always saw sound, you know, skyscrapers when uh, there was rubble. And so he had this great passion, you know, or whether it was myself getting elected as uh, one of the first women of, uh, you know, Indian origin, not only here in, in Canada, but in the world. I hope Actually, that... the, I'm going to correct you, Dr. Ruby Dalla, <laughs> the first, you're in the Guinness Book of Records, my love. <laughs> but I think I, I would hope that, you know, our um, uh, our achievements in those particular areas, I hope the biggest success of the Dalla group of companies and the Dalla family of Dr. Neil Dalla and Dr. Ruby Dalla is really to inspire and to empower other individuals that if these two could do it growing up, you know, in Winnipeg, in one of the poorest neighborhoods in the country, that do you know what? We can do it too. Yes. And you, and you don't have to be born with a silver spoon. You don't have to be born with, you know, a famous last name. You don't have to be, you know, coming from this big wealthy family or be networked or connected. Don't let anyone stop you from achieving what your goals and your dreams are. And I hope after, you know, listening to this interview and us sharing the story, I hope that the Dalla group of companies is going to create the next generation of South Asian achievers, not only South Asian, but all young people and women to say that, you know what, these two did it. So can we. And for me, that will be the biggest success of seeing people achieve and live their dreams. Amen to that. What a legacy. I mean, there isn't anything greater than that. That's the highest level of thinking and thought process is when you want to elevate power and elevate empowerment into people around you. It's incredible. You know, I have to ask you this. So much has been done, historically speaking, um, throughout your journey, throughout the journey of um, Dr. Neil Dala. And, and you know, the, the proof is in the pudding on so many levels. What can we look forward to with the Dala group of companies as we roll into the second half of 2023 into 2024? What are some of the things that we can look forward to seeing you guys do? Well, sometimes God always has a bigger plan, you know, for, for you than you have for yourself. And it's been reflective throughout uh, everything that we've done. And I hope that the uh, Dalla group of companies were committed to uh, championing the legacy that Dr. Neil Dalla left behind. Uh, he wanted to expand into, uh, you know, the uh, hotel space uh, in a much, uh, uh, much larger manner. And uh, with assets in Canada and Florida, he wanted to go global. And I am hoping in the next uh, up coming months uh, that we are going to continue that legacy. There is a lot of hard work that's going on, uh, you know, into uh, that fulfillment. And I hope that we're going to grow that portfolio. Uh, I've discovered uh, in uh, the very, very, uh, you know, short time uh, that I have been exposed uh, to the hotel space, uh, that there's not a lot of women in it, uh, which mm -hmm. was very 
to uh, what the experience was when I first got elected um, in 2004. So uh, there's uh, a lot of challenges there, but uh, the good thing is all of the brands, whether it's uh, you know Marriott or IHG, which is Holiday Inn or Hilton or Wyndham, uh, they're all incredibly supportive of uh, women entering the industry. And I hope that we're going to continue uh, the legacy of, uh, of uh, Neil Dalla in that space. But once again, just as you asked me what's going to define our success, I think and I hope for the future uh, that we're going to continue to mentor individuals. We're going to continue to inspire the next generation and really empower them to achieve. And, you know, the the one of the reasons, uh, actually two of the reasons that, you know, we were so proud to support Anoki on its 20 years uh, is not only knowing of you and your journey of not only as a, as a woman, as a single mother, but also as an entrepreneur of really creating and putting your vision into reality and really not I'm talking about Inoki within itself, but really promoting and empowering and mentoring other South Asians, you know, to achieve excellence. One of the visions that was very, uh, issues that I was very passionate about when I was in politics is the importance, you know, for us as a community, you know, to really, really be united. And they're mm -hmm. too often, you know, whether it's women with women or within our community, there is so much jealousy and there's so much competition. And the one thing with my brother and I, we never, ever competed with anyone. We never looked at anybody. And even when we were being raised, you know, in, in Winnipeg and the North End, in one of the lowest socioeconomic, you know, um, uh, demographics in the entire country, and we lived in this small little house you know what, we never looked at anyone that had a big house because we were always happy with what we had. Right. So I, and I, I really, really hope, you know, with your promotion and support of South Asian excellence, we were proud to support you. And the other reason that we were so proud, you know, for the Dalla Group to join hands with Anoki was really your focus on mental health mm -hmm. and talk about what is our success and what is in store for the future. I hope that we can start changing the lives of some of those that are suffering in silence because there are far too many people who are suffering from depression. There are far too many people who suffer from many types of different mental health issues. And if we can just really, you know, touch the lives of as many people as possible, and even with one person, if we can change their life, and make a difference, I know that we as a company will have succeeded. Absolutely. And you know, I have to close off bringing it back to you, my dear lady. I wanna ask this of you, because I feel that your journey has been on major, major highs and major, major lows, more so than you know, how most people live kind of in a straight line, like 80% of the world live a certain way. And then there's those 10% that have crazy accomplishments that they have. And then there's that 1% that are insanely in a different level, people like you, my love. So I need to ask you this question because I feel it's an important one. What is the one piece of advice for budding professionals and entrepreneurs that you wish you had known when you started perhaps your political career? Because I feel that one was the one that truly was the most difficult, I would imagine, would have been for anyone. A woman in politics and the entire globe had its eyes on you. I'll never forget the, the, the kinds of things that you had to face. So I need to ask you that question. I think it's just always have faith in God. You know, when God's with you, no one can ever touch you. And I'm getting emotional listening to your question because I was reflecting back on when I first got elected, you know, in 2004 and you know, the, the world was, was celebrating and whether it was in Canada or America or, you know, out in India, everyone was celebrating that, you know, a daughter and a sister from our community, you know, had, had gotten elected. And so it wasn't my yeah. victory. It was the victory of, you know, our community. And 
there were some very, very tough moments, you know, and there it was at a time when women just weren't in politics. And I was the first one. So we, you know, I was blessed that there were other women before me. But in our community, you know, not only here in Canada, but in the world outside of India, okay. you know, there was this young you know, Indian woman who is getting elected into, uh, you know, going through this campaign to get elected in uh, in Canadian politics. And mm -hmm. so it, it was tough. And people, you know, celebrated the achievement, but they don't realize, you know, the journey and the struggle, the sacrifice and the challenges that one had. And I, I think if I were to remind myself back then, you know, I would have wanted to know what I know now was that God's always with you and will always protect you. And the second piece of advice that I would give, because it's not just about politics, it's about whatever we do in our life, because there are always struggles and sacrifices and challenges. Never, ever give up and never take no for an answer. You know, if one person says no to you, go and knock on another door. If another person says no to you, go and knock on the third door. And sometimes one could get discouraged. Always have your vision and your passion and do it with purpose within your heart and surround yourself with positivity. Surround yourself with people who believe in your dream. They don't have to agree with you, but they believe in what you're trying to achieve. And I think when you you know, develop that foundation that you know that God is always there and you're always looking towards a solution because for every problem, there's always a solution and make yourself whether it's in business, whether it's in life, or whether it's impossible in politics, make yourself unstoppable. And when you do that, okay, of always just pushing forward, no matter, you know, how foggy it is, or whatever mountain you have to break through, just keep on moving forward in life. And I think when you keep on moving forward, nothing will ever stop you from achieving your goal. Mm -hmm. You know, I just got back from Bali and I'm going to end it with this. And Bali is a known uh, as a place of, of spirituality and, and healing. And in the midst of my crazy life of trying to, you know, navigate through um, everything that we have going on since my brother's passed, I had a friend that invited me to Bali and I thought there was a reason that I went and I discovered it was, you know, for this healing because they're known as one of the most healing places, uh, healing uh, places in the world. And one of the healers, you know, that uh, that I met with, uh, she told me something that I don't think I'll ever forget. Tell me. The healer actually was the the healer from the movie um, Eat, Love, Pray. And he doesn't speak uh, very, very few words of English, doesn't speak much English. And he's married, you know, to this British woman who speaks English. So he translated for the woman and the woman told me, he looked at me and he said, the one thing I want you to remember. And I said, oh, what is it? And she says to me, she says, always keep looking and facing towards the sun because the shadows will get further and further behind you. <laughs> I love that. So whether it's in politics, whether it's in business or whether it's in life or in a relationship or whatever it is, always keep looking forward and keep looking towards the sun because the sun will always shine its light on you. And those shadows are just going to keep getting further and further away. And you'll keep on getting further towards your goal and what you need to achieve. I absolutely adore you, lady. You are a sensational human being on so many levels, so much wisdom, so much a person can learn and glean from your story. I want to send people to go hang out with you. Social media, would that be the place? Yeah, so we're uh, we're quite active on uh, Instagram, and uh, so it's a uh, uh, Ruby Della one. Um, so they can find us there on Instagram. But I'm also very excited and I'm looking forward, uh, you know, to your event that I'm going to be speaking at. So yes, if you come and hang out. Please come to uh, you know the event that Anoki is doing. I think it's uh, June the 17th uh, for the brunch. Uh, it'll be a great opportunity to 
uh, you know, share a little bit more uh, and give an insight into uh, the journey, uh, not only about politics, but talking about entrepreneurship, talking about, uh, you know, really building a business and uh, some of the um, the core, uh, one would say, core competencies that are required, you know, to be able to build it and sustain it and to grow it. And uh, then in the evening, we have your ball. So I think it'll be a great idea, uh, you know, for everyone to uh, come and uh, support uh, Raj Gurn, to support the Anoki team. Uh, because uh, these events, people all love to attend, but they actually take a lot of time, effort, and energy. And I know that Raj uh, has been uh, putting a, a lot of time in uh, and energy, and her team has been working nonstop around the clock. So uh, I think that coming to the uh, the gala, but also to the brunch, I think it'll be a good opportunity. We'll take some questions, uh, you know, from uh, the audience, and I hope that uh, you know. What uh, some of the um, some of the teachings and the experience of my journey and yours as well, Raj, and so many other great women that are out there. I hope that it's going to just really inspire uh, a whole generation of not only young people, but it's going to inspire a whole generation of women. Uh, because I want the women from our community, you know, just to continue to achieve new heights. And I always say one of my biggest rewards in politics was when I would see young girls, you know, who would come out and campaign and who I even meet now. And they would turn to me when I would ask them, what do you want to be when you grow up? And they would look at me in the eye and they would say, I'm going to be prime minister one day. And I would wow. think if these young girls are thinking that at that age, you know, to me, that has really been a, a victory of success to change their mindset into believing that anything in life is possible. Because you've made it possible, my love. Thank you so, so much for your time. You're, you're, you're so gracious and, and you're so forthcoming and you're so honest and so transparent with your story that it's going to be very palpable for people who are watching, listening, and reading this. Thank you so much for coming out and hanging out with Anoki Uncensored. I truly appreciate you. Thank you, uh, Raj, once again. And I know that you have interviewed uh, many distinguished people, so it's a great honor for myself, and I'm very humbled. Uh, you know, we all have our journey in life, and if we can give back and make really a, a difference in uh, the life of one person, I know that uh, we all will have um, achieved our goals. And uh, congratulations to you, uh, not only as a friend, but, uh, you know, as a, as a woman, as an entrepreneur. Uh, so much of what you have achieved is really just reflective of what uh, Dr. Neil Dallas stood for. And I know that we can't see him right now, but from wherever he is, I know that he is shining his light and so incredibly proud of you and your team and the Anoki family. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, my love. And Dr. Neil Dala, I know that we may not be able to see you, my love, but you can definitely see us. And he is smiling down and, and, and he, I know that he's thinking, what took you two girls so long to have this conversation <laughs> on Anoki? I know he's saying that. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Thank you so much, my love. And folks, so these are the stories and I'll see you next week with so much more on another edition of Anoki Uncensored. Thank you so much and take care of yourself, guys.